So you spent a lot of good earned money and purchased a Team Wendy Xville helmet and got the MSA sword and headset and now you want to run them together. Can you do it? No. Well, not until now. The Saras, the sword and arc reel adapter made by Iron Forge Concepts, is CNC cut from bar stock 6061 T6 aluminum. So what does that mean to you and me? They're not plastic and they're made to last. The Saras are going to allow you to modify your MSA Swordens and attach them to your helmet via the Team Wendy Peltor adapter sold separately, and this will allow you to run your system as nature intended. In no particular order, you will need a Team Wendy x helmet, the Peltor adapters from Team Wendy with the rail screws, a knife or razor blade box cutter, precision screwdriver with an H15 hex bit and a Torx T8 bit, a set of four Saras, a pair of lineman's pliers or a Dremel with a cutting wheel, a pair of tension clip pliers, a pair of MSA sword and electronic ear protection, and optional is a vise, some Loctite, and maybe a small tray for parts. The whole process should take a little less than an hour if you're patient and careful. And don't be stupid. Wear eye protection. Be sure to note that there are two different sides to the Sarah, a ray side and a flat side. That information will come in handy later. The Team Wendy Peltor adapters have three distinct pieces, the rail adapter, the wire uprights, and the plastic clips that connect to the headset. We'll start by removing the plastic clips. They should slide off with a slight pull. There are two retention points on the wire that keep the plastic pieces on. We'll need to remove these to install the Saras. We'll do that in a little bit. So the whole installation will go like this. We'll slice the rubber that keeps the communication wires attached to the headband. We'll disassemble the swordens by detaching the headband and removing the gel cup assembly. We'll unscrew the internal electronics and remove the retention clips that hold on the connection pins. And once the pins are removed, we'll install the Saras, reassemble the ear pro, attach the rail adapters, and connect the ears to the helmet. Easy. So start by removing the fabric that covers the headband. Is this step necessary? No, not really. But you get to look under the fabric and see that it was made in the mother USA, and that makes me feel good. By inserting the ear protection into a vise, you can create a more stable platform to use the knife to cut off the shrink wrap tubing that holds the communication wiring. I like to use a vise for this so I don't accidentally slice the electronic wiring. You can choose to do this however you'd like. There's no need to clamp down particularly hard with the vise, just enough that the ears don't move. I place some tape over the jaws to limit any scuff marks on the ears. Next up is the removal of the ear cup assembly. I'm going to start with the side on the on off button, but it doesn't really matter. Both sides function the same way. Place your finger under the gel lining and the whole cup should pop right off. There's a piece of foam that protects the electronics and microphone. Remove that as well and place both of these in your parts bin. Now that the interior of the headset is exposed, you'll see five screws and two retention clips that we'll need to deal with. You'll need a T8 bit on your screwdriver for this part. Start by removing the screw with the two washers and then the four other screws. Be careful you don't damage any of the electronics or wiring. Gently place the circuit board out of the way so you can access the retention clips. The most essential piece of equipment for this process is a good set of clip pliers. They're pliers that have really small ends that will engage the pry points for the clips. Once you've removed the four clips, watch out, they're easy to lose. You should be able to slide the connection pins out of the headset. This will allow you to fully detach the headset from the ear cups. Now that we've been able to remove the actual headset from the pins, it's time to cut off the ends of the headband wire. This wire is pretty hard, so use either very sharp cutting pliers or a Dremel. I cut the wire at a point immediately above the curl, keeping the cut as flat and clean as possible. Use a small file to remove any sharp edges. Once you have these parts cut, you can place the headband aside. Now it's time to attach the Saras to the ears themselves. On the non-wire side, insert the connection pin through the Sara and into the ear. Make sure that the raised side of the Sara is facing outward. With the connection pin in the ear cup, reconnect the retention clip with the clip pliers. On the side with the wiring, just slip the wire through the notch in the Sara and follow the same process of reconnecting the pin and the retaining clip. Reconnect all of the electronics by screwing down the electronic board, replace the padding, making sure that the small circular cutout is over the microphone, and snap the gel cups back into place. 
Just like the headband, the uprights on the Peltor adapters are pretty solid. Unless you have the hand strength of a professional arm wrestler, using regular old Lyman's pliers, especially dull ones, may not give you a clean cut, or any cut at all. You may need to use a small Dremel with a cutting wheel to make your life easier. Make sure to only take off a little bit at a time, no more than an eighth of an inch from each wire or else you'll run the risk of cutting them too short right off the bat. Take your screwdriver and use an H1.5 bit. You'll need this to adjust the screws in the Saras. Back the screws out of the Saras slowly, but not all the way since they're easy to lose. You should be able to slide the Peltor adapters right into the Saras at this point. Adjust the screw tension so that the Peltor adapters are securely fastened to the ear cups. If you're mounting these permanently to the helmet, you may want to use some blue Loctite on the screws to keep them from backing out. You should note that the uprights on these adapters will click in and out of position, allowing you to temporarily move the headset away from your ears. The snapping is normal. All right, we're almost done. In the box with the Peltor adapters, there should have been a small package with rail screws. You'll use these to connect the helmet adapters to the helmet. This next part you can do with or without the Peltor adapters connected, but I chose to do it with them on. Thread the ear cup through the helmet as I'm showing here, behind the BOA system and above the suspension system inside the helmet. That will help keep the wiring out of the way. A more permanent solution would be to use some adhesive clips inside the helmet to more securely mount the wire. You can find the method that works best for you. Make some final adjustments on positioning and you're done. In order to reuse your headband in times where the helmet's not needed, just remove the small screws from the Saras and disconnect the ear cups. Unthread them from the helmet and reattach the ear cups to the original headband using the Saras. Hope this helps, and thanks for watching.